It's seven o'clock on a Sunday night, and you know what that means. It's Topical Starts right now. A very good evening to you, South Africa, those watching around the world. My name is Blaine Herman, and this is Ed's Topical, our digital audience with us tonight. Among them, one of our guests, Werner Horn, looking forward to the engagement shortly. Speaking about engagement, the clock is ticking, excitement is building, for us anyway. It's just four weeks to go till the start of Elections 360 on this very channel, as well as SABC2. Sakina and I, I can guarantee you, we are eager to visit your area from next month and, and throughout the, the election season. It's a program that will provide an in-depth analysis as well as insights into political party campaigns. But more importantly, uh, it's going to give you a voice ahead of this crucial elections. We'll keep you in the loop as to how and where over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. To tonight's topical issue, Emma Powell, the Democratic Alliance's shadow minister for international relations and cooperation told SABC News this week that last month the multi-party charter, which is made up of about 11 political parties, wrote to the G7 and the European Union stipulating that they need all eyes on these elections and detailed a number of requests. Now, just to be clear, so we're all on the same book, when we talk about the G7, we're talking about seven of the world's major industrial countries consisting of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK and the United States. That's the G7. We understand that the Democratic Alliance sent a letter to 13 nations as well as two regional blocs, the AU and the EU, and that essentially they were reiterating the multi-party charter request. Now the party has made formal requests to their partners in democracy, as they put it, to, to engage with consequence consequence in the run-up to the elections. What does it mean? Well, in the party's letter to Anthony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, there are a number of things that they are seeking. We will get to that shortly, but it leads us to our question of the week. And we're asking you, does the DA's request for more monitoring resources from the West raise your doubts about the integrity of the upcoming elections? Let us know at its topical SABC. Magic wall time. Let's walk. Uh, what are the non-negotiables for you that will ensure free, fair and credible elections? Please share your thoughts with us at its topical SABC. Perspective coming up. Let's get you some context now. And as always, we turn to the magic wall, what we know and why it matters. Now, let's zoom in to the DA's letter to Anthony Blinken, the US Secretary of State. Uh, and one of the issues mentioned was that it's the high stakes, right? Uh, saying that this will be the most crucial election in our country since the dawn of democracy in 1994. And the letter also states that the African National Congress may receive below 50% of the national vote. And going further to say that there's increasing willingness by the ANC to forge alliances with, and I quote, malign international actors whose regimes are characterized by tyranny, terror, and oppression. We will discuss. We have the ANC on the program tonight. We'll put it to them. What's the DA asking for? Let's have a look among the requests, right? Additional resources by supplied, uh, be supplied rather, by the international community for the additional deployment of domestic observers, international monitors, equipped civil society organizations to provide, among other things, vote education, resources for a parallel vote tabulation process run by independent organizations. I want to break that down further for you a little later on. Also, 
resources that will protect South Africa to prevent any attempts by foreign actors to manipulate the election. And this is by using AI, cyber hacks, and the like. Again, we will discuss further. But it boils down to the subject line of election observers, very much in the spotlight. What do they do? Well, according to the IEC, they keep an eye on the voting process at voting stations, the, the counting of votes, the final counting determination, and declaration of results. Important. So, in a nutshell, observers, both domestic and international, play a crucial role in ensuring that the elections are transparent, they're free and fair, and that the outcome, and this is very important, right, for democracy, that the outcome is accepted by voters, political parties, and candidates. Question. There'll be over 23,000 voting stations across the country, right? If parties can't deploy agents to all voting stations, what assurances or, or mechanisms will be in place to ensure that individuals with, with, let's say, nefarious intentions are caught? What about human error? What measures are there to pick up errors timelessly? Again, we will discuss, lots to discuss on the program. We have the better minds on the program. Perspective coming up, no doubt. Now, to our regular word on the street feature. And we took to the various streets of Johannesburg around the country as well, seeking diverse insights and perspectives on this topic. And this is what people had to say. Take a look. The IEC have started with our elections long time ago, 94. We've never seen anything wrong with the IEC. Confident enough, we are still confident even now. The IEC is there to oversee the elections in South Africa. And in South Africa, we believe in, a, in, an, in an open political space where this party should respect this party's ideas and that party should respect another party's ideas. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the voters. I think it's important that we, we get the counts and the ballots counted properly and not misplaced and in terms of the role of the foreign intervention I think it's a it can only be a good thing um, that's provided that they are honest and fair themselves I don't think South Africa is a room for rigging elections it, the elections are always fair and fair there's no rigging if you lose you lose not because uh, there's any playing of votes in terms of foreign observers What's an observer going to do? Observer just watches. Uh, doesn't necessarily matter. And if we're talking about the US, they've also got their own issues when it comes to electorals and uh, the actual process they have. So the American people don't have faith in their system, yet we call upon them to come for us. Doesn't make sense. IEC cannot take us from 1994 until, until the last elections in November 2021. And then you question the credibility of the coming election. Because of now, you feel that there must be a regime change. All right, we appreciate your thoughts on this matter. We also apologize the video is breaking up there a bit, but you got to hear what people are saying. That's important. It helps get a better understanding on the best way forward in order to bring about change or maintain what we have if it is good enough. Let's discuss. We've lined up a number of guests as well as our digital audience. We'll be throwing a few questions to them as well. We have the ANC's NEC member Buti Manamela here in the house. Thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Thank you so Good much. Good to have you on the program. Uh, Werner Horn is uh, from the DA, DA's national uh, spokesperson. We also have uh, Terry Tselani, executive chairperson of the Institute of Election Management Services in Africa, also former uh, vice chair of the IEC. Uh, Terry, thank you very much indeed for your time. Werner Buti, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation. It must get us to a better place and a better understanding of what's at stake here. Verna, to you first. Let's, let's understand why the DA took this route and is it the best possible route to have taken given the current state of play? Well, we, we exactly took the route. Uh, good evening, um, <laughs> firstly, and thank you for the invitation. We exactly took the route because in our view to have... Uh, 
an ele election observer possibly at each one of the 23 and a half thousand voting stations can just add another, another layer of confidence in the outcome um, at, that, at that specific station. And historically, through the civil society and as you alluded to in your intro, through the presence of party agents, that specific presence um, as a layer of oversight over the counting and the reporting of the outcomes have not been achieved. Mm. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the, the most observers uh, seemingly which we've uh, had in, in any one of our elections is more or less 6,000, which leaves about three quarters of, of voting stations unobserved, so right. to speak, when it comes to independent election observers. Was this issue ever brought up before, though? I mean, the IC has been... Uh, conducting elections since 94. What's, what's changed this year? Well, if you just go back to our last local government elections on the 1st of October 2021, the IEC went public and said, even though the accreditation process for election observers has closed, they were worried that they still had uh, relatively few accreditations and they called for late applications. So from the IEC side, there's always been a, a, a welcoming of independent election observers. And of course, um, over the years, uh, specifically looking back to 1994 and 1999, there was a, a, a fairly intense uh, international observer presence in South Africa. One of the other issues that jumped out from the letter was that the fact that well, you mentioned that the ANC might be dropping to below 50%. Uh, Butimana Mela, I just want to read the DA's letter, part of it, from uh, to the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, that the ruling elite grow more desperate to retain electoral support ahead of the upcoming elections. They may be willing to put their narrow political interests ahead of this country's broader interests and sacred constitutional values. What's your response to that? Well, this is hogwash. Uh, I mean, the DA has uh, outdone itself this time. I of, I've always believed that the DA is planning to, you know, lose these elections far worse than they have. Firstly, um, you know, this has been quite long in the in the making. Uh, they firstly suggested that the ANC uh, has completely failed in government, uh, pushed that narrative, and then followed by a narrative that says that, uh, uh, you know, the ANC is going to lose elections. They have manufactured poll after poll. Uh, and when they realize that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, manufactured uh, uh, consent is not, uh, uh, you know, it's not succeeding, now they come up with uh, uh, this suggestion that we may actually be working on rigging elections. Firstly, there's no evidence that has been presented. You asked uh, uh, Mr. Horn here as to uh, what is the basis of this call, uh, and there's absolutely no basis. They haven't shown any evidence of any election or in any voting district or in any voting station where there was le I mean, uh, rigging, even in the most recent local government elections, by elections that have been taking place. Secondly, there is no shred of suggestion that there is intended uh, external interference from anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And instead, what they do is themselves call for external interference, not even from the continent. I mean, the big question is if the, if the DA is really worried about elections being interfered on, why not, uh, you know, go uh, within our neighboring countries? Why not go to the African Union? And this is where the racism comes in, where in it can only be U.S. and and European and Scandinavian countries that, uh, uh, you know, certify elections as being free and fair. And, I, and my, 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 my problem with this is that it ferments post-elections anxiety, it po ferments post-elections violence, mm -hmm. because if people are made to believe that a credible institution such as the IEC, which by the way has just been appointed in the Association of World Elections bodies mm -hmm. as its chairperson, trust trusted by its right. peers in the world, if people can be made to believe this propaganda that we intend to rig elections, why would they be comfortable? We have run free and fair elections right. in this country, and we're also confident that given the ANC's track record, we are going to win this election. I just want to pick up on something that you said, and something that former President Tabombeki uh, said, uh, Vad Nohorn, uh, saying that people from different countries get invited by, uh, you know, to observe elections. 
um, not by political parties, right? So, and this is what he says, right? And I'm quoting, the DA is making a statement about itself, something that you alluded to, Butima Namela, that it doesn't trust the country's capacity to handle its own elections. And the people you trust, the DA that he, he's referring to, is effectively, and I quote, the white world. How do you respond to that? Well, no, I mean, it, it's lazy analysis at best from Buti and the former president. If they followed the, 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 the complete set of communication, there was an invitation to the African Union as well as, as well as to a country like Zambia, where we believe there is a functional democracy. Um, and, and, and just to return to the, 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 the ironic, some of the ironic statements made, the plea for, for additional resources to be made available, not to the DA, but to independent uh, bodies who would, would be in a position to field observers at each and every station, is exactly aimed at addressing the type of post-election anxiety that we in all likelihood is going to see, whether Buti and the ANC wants to believe that or not. The, the big likelihood is in that this election that the ANC will lose its majority. And this will be the first election in which we will then see how the ANC theory act. Look, I mean, uh, firstly, firstly, uh, just one second, Mr. Maneva, I'll bring you in. Yeah. Uh, finish your thought, uh, Mr. Horn. Yeah. So, so this will uh, this will be indeed a first for South Africa, uh, where we now will sit with a situation in all likelihood where uh, a number of parties may insist on recounts, mm. may question um, the outcomes and the results when announced. And in that sense, it, it, it has the very real possibility of being not only a first for this country, right. Look, but to, to pose very serious questions about the, the integrity of the election. Right. And what we're saying is yeah. if we then can have an independent observer right. at each and every station who co-certifies that the IEC did what it was supposed to do, then Look, that public we, we confidence have, can right. be fact be bolstered. Mr. Okay. Mr. Horn, we, we have lost elections in Tuani. We have lost elections in the city of Cape Town here in Johannesburg. Well, we didn't lose, but we're under the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the majority, uh, which if he says this, if he says there's an opportunity for the ANC to lose elections in uh, uh, national general elections, we could have done the same things with the big cities if our interest was at rigging elections. And I think that, you know, the, the points he's making is basically emphasizing what, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what, what we've raised uh, mm. as, as, as an objection and as how ridiculous, uh, you know, the dear suggestion is. Uh, you know, the perception that firstly, African governments, black governments, when they come into power, they run out of steam at a particular period. And once they run out of steam, they would want to rig elections. This is basically the, the, the suggestion. But the truth of the matter is that a propaganda machinery has been running for some years. Um, I mean, for, for the last few years in this country, which suggests that the ANC is going to, to lose. And if you read, open mm. any newspapers and radios, you hear things. And and I think the, the truth that the DA knows is that this has not been tested. And it happened with but the last if, election. If, if so, the so intention is to add this extra layer of security in terms of adding to the credibility of the results, etc., why not? That's no, but, the pushback. But, but if, 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 you, if you do that for the wrong reasons, then, then uh, uh, you know, that, that, shouldn't be, uh, uh, that shouldn't suffice. Mm -hmm. If you have evidence that there's intention to rig elections, present that evidence, and on the basis of that, then let's put in measures. But in state, what they are suggesting is that we actually must have external interference. Mm -hmm. But I think the other point to emphasize is that we all have party agents, who are supposed to be present at, you know, we've, we've seen some of the party agents sleeping, uh, you know, at, at voting stations and all of that. That shouldn't be the problem of the IEC. Their role is to observe. Their role is to make sure that they report to their respective uh, party headquarters. Mm. And if you do not trust those, uh, and, and you believe that someone can come from Norway or from the US, and, and that it is only their voice that matter, then there's a problem. And in any way, right. I think the point that pre former President Becky made, that uh, the IEC in any way opens up 
uh, you know, the, the doors for external observers to come in and observe the elections. It is not the yeah. responsibility of the DA to do this thing that it is doing. Well, let's bring in uh, Terry Tsilani. Just uh, a point of note that we did invite the IEC. They weren't available, but no doubt we'll engage with them as the weeks go on. Uh, Mr. Tsilani, uh, do you see it uh, as interference or an extra layer of security? Well, I think there are two issues that have been conflated here. There are political issues and technical issues, and I've got to separate them. Mm. Let's focus on the technical aspects, uh, because uh, the election observation is something that is in the electoral law. Uh, Section 84 of the Electoral Act uh, does recognize uh, election observers, and the election observers are accredited uh, by the Electoral Commission. Now, there are rules. It's contained, obviously, within the legislation as well. Once you start moving outside that particular area and are beginning to put a framework that the observers are going to be using, which is outside uh, what the legislation prescribes, then uh, you are obviously creating an alternative system that is different from mm. the system that is prescribed by the legislation, and that would actually be a little problematic. Uh, and then I'm just focusing on one aspect. Right. Perhaps it's also a misunderstanding uh, from the side of uh, the authors of the letter, um, because uh, the election observers uh, cannot create a parallel counting system. That is a responsibility allocated to the commission right. uh, by, by the constitution. The aspect in terms of section 190 of the constitution. That uh, determines the role of the commission. One is to organize and, and manage the elections. Two, to ensure that those elections are free and fair. And three, to declare those results within a, sp a specified period. What now, is your concern, sir, if you have a parallel tabulation system running? No, no I'm saying that you can't do that. You can't create a parallel system because, firstly, you're undermining the role of the commission, but you're also interfering in the way that the commission is doing. Mm. Uh, the role of the observers is like auditors. They audit the system. They don't come and create their own system because then at the end of the day, who's supposed to be, which results are we supposed to believe? Right. If you've got two parallel structures, one, it's a constitutional body given uh, powers by the constitution to perform a particular task. And then you have another one, uh, which is uh, uh, a get together of observers. Mm. Uh, they also create their own results. And then what if those results, for one reason or another, are not the same? Right. And they cannot, it, is possible, it is possible that they may not be the same. And then the reason why they may not be the same is because the commission, uh, within 48 hours after the uh, uh, voting, has yes. got to deal with what we call uh, Section 55 objections. These are objections material to the outcome of the results of the election. So right. you may have received results in a particular voting station, and those results... Uh, declared. Uh, but when the commission looks at those results, it uh, identifies something as a result of an objection right. that is objectionable and sustain that objection. It means they will nullify the results of that particular area. Alternatively, yeah. they will uh, ask for a recount of that particular station. Right. Now, if you already have two different uh, sets of results, that can create a lot of anxiety. And that can create credibility crisis even for the commission. Mm. Fair enough. You shaking your head in disagreement? Yeah, no, that's what not not what meant with a parallel voter tabulation system. I don't know whether it is uh, after the time Mr. Tsilani left the commission, but as a matter of fact, political parties um, and possibly even some civil society organisations get access. I want to say backdoor access to uh, uh, scanned and and. Uh, uh, audited and captured results on station level and that already enables political parties to then on the basis of what has been reported by the party agents verify whether that specific process unfolded accurately and as Mr. Tsilani says that's in most instances the source of the section 55 objections. So from our side We've never advocated for an uh, independent body to run uh, 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 their own results system, publish whatever they then tabulate, but, but really uh, uh, just another set of eyes once again 
on the, the, the capturing and the reporting of outcomes, because as a matter of fact, that is one of the stopping points in the whole process, which historically has led to the, the biggest anomalies. Um, in most cases, to be fair to the IEC, through human error and fatigue, but in some cases also because presiding officers has had nefarious agendas. Um, so, and, uh, so, look, firstly, yes. uh, 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 firstly, the process that you talk about is the process that we said we're expressing our confidence in. That's the process that has been in operation for some time. That is the process that has been endorsed by all the political parties. And I think to expose even the ridiculousness of the DA, uh, you know, all the other political parties, including the political parties in, in your moonshoot agreement or whatever you call it, have objected to some of the points that you've raised in the, in the letter. Secondly, calling on external governments to fund, whether it's civil society or anybody, in work related to, uh, you know, to elections is in itself calling for external interference. And the DA should have actually thought, uh, you know, about that. The third thing, which I think, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we need to, to, to emphasize, is that in the desperation of obviously wanting to locate yourself in the center, uh, you know, of this election uh, 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 discussion, you, uh, you know, inadvertently questions the credibility of the DA. And I think that's the answer, I mean, of the IEC. And I think that's the answer that, uh, I mean, the question that you need to, 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 to answer. Do you have evidence that there is intended interference in the elections? Do you have in, uh, evidence that, uh, uh, you know, the current system as we have it is not credible? And on the basis of that, which is what justifies your letter. And if, if you cannot answer those questions, I do not think that we even should be entertaining this letter from the DA. We should all be confident, and as everybody has said, confident uh, on the work that the IEC has done. Yes, some of the other political parties are setting up their own infrastructure so that they are able to count. That's not in question. Everybody does that. But the intention is to support the work that's already being done by the IEC. Well, all that you're doing is to yeah. ferment violence. Let's, let's test that. Uh, Mr. Horn, uh, with regards to, do you have any evidence before you? Does the party have any evidence? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, what Mr. Manamela is trying to do is to, to decide what the relevant issues here is. Now, don't think to call for uh, the use of independent and the expanded use of election, uh, of independent election observers, or and even the funding of money. To go back for no, money. No, let, me just, let me just, yeah, let me just continue. Go on, Mr. Horn. Yeah, so I don't think to just call for that can necessarily be extrapolated to, to the point where, where it can be said that the DA has now said that it is no confidence in the IEC. As a matter of fact, similar to the ANC, we have not come out after any election in the past to say that the election was not free and fair. So in that regard, we, we have uh, been satisfied over the years with the, with the freeness and fairness and the accuracy of, of the outcomes. What we're saying is this will be a different election. And what Mr. Manamela must quite possibly answer is the question, how can the request for the capacitization and the, the rollout of independent election observers be equal to meddling and interference in our, in our elections well, if, if the ANC is not planning uh, to derail well, the election. You also, you also are saying uh, in the letter that you're witnessing an increasing willingness by the ANC to forge alliances uh, with malign international actors whose regimes are characterized by tyranny, terror uh, and oppression. Are you suggesting that the ANC might make a play for these elections in a illegal and dishonorable way? Well, I think anybody who's committed to, to democracy and constitutional democracy must surely be worried about the fact that the ANC has uh, agreed to the entering of, of countries like Iran into the, to the BRICS poll. <laughs> the very close relationship with, uh, of the ANC with Russia, where there was mock elections today after the main opposition candidate was, was taken out is a, a, quite another example to which we cannot turn a blind eye in this country.
Usman. Well, I mean, uh, you know, people nearly stormed Capitol Hill uh, in the U.S. immediately after the the uh, you know the election, and these are the same people that you are going to to and 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 and, and we've we we haven't said anything about what happened in the U.S. general elections, and 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 I think it's ridiculous for you to suggest that our participation in a legitimate multilateral structure such as BRICS, which has invited member states to be part there. Off, uh, therefore means that uh, you know we will automatically uh, plan to rig elections. I challenge you today to go into the electoral court and raise all these matters and let the electoral court be the arbiter because I think that you've only raised this issue without any evidence. It is only a figmentation of the minds of the DA and that is why nobody's even supporting you on this point. And I think no, the more you argue it, this it, point, the more ridiculous you right. can see. Mr. Hon, I'll come back to you yes. in the short while. Here's the challenge to you. Why don't you go to the electoral court to then declare unconstitutional the act, the parts of the act that allows for independent observers if you don't want them? Okay, then. let's test this, right? And given Terry Talani, given the issues that have been raised in terms of foreign, alleged foreign interference, etc., what sort of mechanisms are currently in place to pick up these issues, be it uh, or, or, uh, individuals with, with nefarious intent or human error? What sort of mechanisms are in place that guarantees free and fair elections? Firstly, let me put it this way, that uh, legislation allows for election observers, both international and domestic. And then we've always had uh, observers, and I think it's important that we always have observers, mm. uh, whether they be international or uh, domestic. And then of course, they've got to have the capacity to be able to perform the role that they perform. And I think we've got to differentiate between the election observers mm -hmm. and party agents. Party agents come from political parties, and they will be there at the voting station to guard the interests of the, uh, their respective political parties. And those, because uh, what is uh, at stake uh, in the election is uh, the votes, and therefore the political parties have got to make sure that they are represented in all the voting stations and that their agents know what's supposed to be happening. Right. Observers, on the other hand, will never cover all 23,000 voting stations. Mm. They work on the basis, there's a methodology that each and every observer mission uses. They work on the basis of a sample. They will take a particular number of uh, voting stations and say, we're going to be observing the stations depending on the criteria that they, they would have developed, and then from there, uh, give uh, information about uh, what is actually transpired in the elections. And the report will be given to the Electoral Commission. Sometimes that report is used to strengthen the systems within the organization. Now you're asking what systems are there? Every aspect of the elections, there are systems from the time when uh, registration of political parties starts until the declaration of the results. You know, so it depends where you want to check uh, whether there is vulnerability, uh, but the commission, and I'm not speaking on their behalf yes. here, um, have always put in mechanism to make sure that uh, nothing unto what happens. But right. even if it did, uh, because of the transparency that is there within the system, it is easy uh, to pick up uh, any malfeasance that may have happened in the electoral process. So it must not come across as though one is saying we don't need election yeah. observers. Election observers are important, both domestic and international. I understand that you need to leave, uh, Mr. Telani, but I just want to just get a clarity question to you in your final thoughts. Um, who grants permission for election observers and monitors? Is it the IEC or is it government by virtue of DERCO? No, no, it is the Electoral Commission that does that. It is in the legislation. As I've suggested, it's contained in Section 84 of the Electoral Act. Now, we've got to differentiate between two things, the monitors and, and, and observers. Mm. We don't have monitors in South Africa. Uh, monitors, uh, the difference between monitors and observers is simple. Observers, they just observe, they cannot interfere with the process, mm. and they submit the report after having gone through the observation. Monitors... Uh, can inter intervene when they find that there is something unto that is happening at the voter station. You know, so there's a difference between right. the monitors and election observers. But we don't have election monitors in South Africa because the legislation mm. does not cater for this.
Thank you, sir, for your time and uh, your insights. I think it's important to establish the facts uh, as we go along. It helps us better understand these issues. Teddy Tilani there. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to our digital audience. Tava, let's hear from you. I see hands up all the way around. Uh, let's start with you, Tava. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think, you know, one, one thing that we have to keep in mind is, is the fact that uh, this election has high stakes. And that, that we, can't, we can't run away from. And I have not had anything that portrays confidence from the ANC side, especially from Mr. Manaman in studio. So I actually think that if we are confident that we are capable as South Africa, it shouldn't be a problem to have an extra layer added to this election. I think what the DA is asking is not asking for somebody to come and take over the work of the IEC. It's simply asking to say, can we have an extra layer of observers? I think it is very clear what observers do. They don't interfere in that process. They are merely there to just say, look, let's observe what's going on mm. here. And then they will then draw to their conclusion what they have observed in, in this case. So to rubbish the DA and claim that the DA is in trouble, I think maybe that actually is telling of what Mr. Manamela believes about his own past. Thank you. I'll get your point uh, in a short while. Mangaliso? If you can unmute Mangaliso. There we go. Go on. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think in my view, we have had uh, the IEC run the elections in this country uh, since the dawn of democracy without any much scrutiny that, uh, that, 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 that I think is befitting for the DA to run all the way to our former colonizers in the name of G7 and the European Union to come and observe these elections instead of starting just in our region because we have SADAC that could have been invited or which usually also does come through when it's time for elections. They could have started with the African Union, but no, because they want to invite a group of men who form part of an economic club that is interested in what goes around in the world where they have businesses, where they have trade. Therefore, it decided to go and fetch them. It is, I think for me, disingenuous for the DA to call for bodies that are so far because if they were calling for people outside of the continent or rather for unions outside of the continent, they should have also included other unions like mm. BRICS, but simply because they wanted to fetch their very own friends. We have seen it's not the first time that they do this. Uh, they have went to lie to America and say there's a genocide going on in South Africa where farmers are being killed. And they didn't have any proof for that. We are seeing them again going, saying they think the elections would be rigged. And again, they failed to give any proof for that. So it gives us a, a really the benefit of the doubt in terms of the DAA. Where is right. it officially ran? Is it here in South Africa or it is just an extension of right. European and African, uh, I mean, and, and American powerhouses? Mr. Manamela and Mr. Hon, I'll get your comments uh, in, in a short while. I just want to go to Emmanuel and then Molatello. Emmanuel first. Emmanuel to you. Good evening, Blaine. And uh, viewers outside there. Uh, Blaine, firstly, viewers, you have to forgive me. I'm suffering from Tintralo syndrome, which is load shedding. Uh, and what, it, what the DA has done, everybody is aware that the DA is long being in the election process. They have been there. It's not for the, their first elections. So if it's not their first election, on their letter which they wrote to the outside world, they should have stipulated the evidence of what they are saying. So what the DA is saying now is an intention to cause chaos. Mm. Emmanuel did say that uh, he's having issues with his connection. Emmanuel, we do apologize for that. I just want to take uh, Molotella, then we will get to comments. Molotella, to you. Um, good evening, Blaine. Good evening to the viewers. Um, Blaine, I have... 
Mm. Because now, mm. how people will go to the election knowing that the apologies. Right. Apologies, uh, indeed, uh, Monatello, as well as Emmanuel, you're not winning with the, regards to your comments. Uh, Mr. Horn, Mr. Manamela, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to discuss some of the comments that our digital audiences have made, as well as the way forward. What next? More next. Welcome back. You're watching It's Topical. The question we're asking you, does the DA's request for more monitoring resources from the West raise your doubts about the integrity of the upcoming elections? It's part of ongoing conversations that we will be having over the next couple of months in the lead up to the May 29th poll. This show will be changing its name in about four weeks' time to Elections 360. We're coming to your area. We're going to listen to your concerns. Some of these issues are being discussed currently. We're going to flesh it out more. Bring those who have the answers to those who need the answers. That's our mission for Elections 360. Let's continue with our discussions. Uh, Buti Manamela, uh, as well as Werner Horn, a DA. Um, uh, Buti, with regards to what you heard from the digital audience, uh, a lot saying that they want evidence, uh, but there's also pushback with regards to, look, if this is going to help democracy, why not? Well, the point is that uh, we haven't poked questions about the credibility of the system as it stands. Um, we haven't said that, um, you know, we've uh, seen or heard of incidents where uh, people are t intending to rig elections. We, we're having by-elections almost every weekend, and none of those have been contested. And so what we are saying as the ANC is that uh, the IEC has the capacity and the integrity together with the people whom they've been at inviting in the past to come and make observations in terms of our elections. We are not in any way, uh, you know, going to oppose anyone who want to suggest that, uh, you know, there might be a serious credibility issues and it is on the basis of this evidence. But if someone is going to, uh, you know, shout fire uh, in, in, in a holy room, uh, we, we're not willing to be, uh, you know, to be persuaded otherwise. Uh, and, and, and I think that, uh, you know, the, uh, the intention, I think, of the, of the uh, DA has got nothing to do with uh, the credibility and integrity of the elections. It has got every Everything to do to feed, uh, you know, into the most monster that suggests that the ANC is going to lose these elections, and typically, like all other African governments, because they're going to lose the elections, they will plan to rig these elections. This whole uh, and, and I had uh, uh, the point that Taba was making yeah. that uh, uh, you know why are we scared? Uh, uh, you know and that these are uh, uh, you know the the most tense elections ever. We've said yeah. that when when uh, you know in the last general elections when there were new political players and even in two previous elections that for us these are tense elections. But also because we take the elections seriously. Right. But to, to, to uh, you know, to create, uh, uh, you know, a narrative and want to feed into that narrative, I think it's actually, uh, you know, self-defeating. In fact, right. regimes in the continent have been changed with these kind of strategies of, uh, you know, pouring money through NGOs and civil societies. And at the end of the day, observers become monitors, monitors become counters, counters actually start monitoring right. whether people are voting the way in which they're supposed to be voting or not. We will not allow that. Werner Horn, the, the presidency calls it, uh, the letter that is, a clumsy PR stunt. Uh, your response to that as well as what Mr. Manamela as well as the digital audience had to say? Yeah, well, no, from our side it's definitely not a PR stunt. It is, as a matter of fact, motivated by our strong commitment to constitutional democracy. Let me say in reaction to what Mr. Manamela has said, that he must not be as Afri um, pessimistic as he is. We have seen changeovers in government in Africa um, on the basis of elections. So there's a good example for the ANC to follow then um, after the announcement of this year's results. They can look to Ghana, they can look to Zambia, 
where in fact uh, parties who has had uh, had power has vacated office once they've lost. Um, uh, let me also say that that of course our our letter must not be seen as our single mm. intervention or engagement on the process of electoral integrity. We're working hand in hand with the IEC through the. Uh, political liaison committees um, on national, provincial and every municipal level to try and, and fortify the systems of the IEC um, as best as possible to ensure that, that once the result is announced, everybody will have confidence in it. And, and then when Mangalisa referred to SADC, as a matter of fact, we've had a long meeting already with the SADC observer mission where they posed mm. a, 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 a long list of questions to us which could then also prepare them to to, to uh, uh, execute their observation mission as best as possible. So uh, uh, there should not be a fixation on us reaching out to specific countries uh, who have the same uh, democratic values as, as our country, <laughs> not only the Democratic Alliance. There's an integrated <laughs> approach to, the, to this election, and we will be very, very satisfied once the result is announced, whether we mm. emerge as the biggest party or not, if there is wholesale confidence right. that ultimately a free and fair election was delivered. I want to try our digital audience once again. Hopefully we get a better connection. Emmanuel, let's try you again, then Molotello. Emmanuel, to you first. Go on, Emmanuel. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Go on. Is my mic audible enough now? Yes, it is. Go, go on. Uh, it seems that we break here. Yeah. Molotello, um, let's try you. Good evening, Blaine. Can you hear me? Yes, go on. All right. So, Blaine, I have a, I have a uh, Blaine, issue with the... Just pause, you can hear me now. Emmanuel, just pause. Uh, I'll just I bring in and, uh, Emmanuel. Earlier on is that uh, even though uh, they can call uh, outside the world to come, uh, the IEC, the, the, our structure, the IEC structure, is well prepared for our election. Mm. However, what the GD has done is to sell South Africans' interest. As South Africans, we are ready for the elections, not to be, not for the outside world to be called to interfere, because they lack, they lack information about what they've said. They lack valid evidence. So we cannot be led in a situation whereby an organization is saying this is, might happen. That is misleading this, the public. Right. And we don't need a political organization misleading the public about the works and how the IEC operates. Observers are there, party agents are there to foresee the interest of a particular organization. Right. So we cannot in any how stand and spectate while the DA is shredding our democracy. It's very wrong what they've done. And it needs to be called... Okay, it's Molotello, let's hear from you. We cannot have this type of practices whereby the DA want uh, uh, voters to focus on them. The fact is, uh, these <laughs> coming elections... Oops, he's gone. All right, I Molotello. Mean, thanks, mean, thanks to Emmanuel, though. Uh, look, hey, strike, strike while the iron's hot, right? Um, we couldn't hear him. I don't think you could hear us. But go ahead, uh, Molotello. 30 seconds. All right, um, so yes, um, I think it's embarrassing because uh, what the DA has done is because um, it does not trust a democratic process that they are a part of and one that they use. Why are they accusing the uh, IEC of potentially rigging the elections? I think it's quite embarrassing. They've been winning the Western Cape and no one has come out and said that um, the, uh, the DA is rigging elections in the Western Cape. So it's quite hypocritical if you ask me. Nobody's uh, dis uh, disregarding the importance of this year's elections. But to go to an extent of what they did is undermining South Africa's sovereignty and it also undermines our democracy as a country. And it begs the question whether the DA has South Africa's interest at heart. Why don't they withdraw if they feel so strongly that the elections are going to possibly be rigged? It, for me, it's like a soccer match. Um, the team that is losing, or the, yeah. the one team is accusing the referee of being biased. Right. Um, and um, winning the game. But every time they lose away games, but they accept the results. For example, when they win the Western Cape, okay. they accept the results without questioning it. So it's inconsistent. Their reaction is quite inconsistent. And I think they're just over sensationalizing right. um, the, the elections that are coming. Let me, take, let me take Taba and then we'll get final thoughts. Uh, I saw you shaking your head vigorously, sir. Go on. 
Yeah, look, the thing is, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to understand uh, where people think the DA is causing alarm. I don't think the DA is causing alarm. It's literally using the very same rules that this country actually supports. The DA is not saying that they're the ones that are going to give observer status. The IEC is. So there is nothing wrong, and it's been clarified. I'm glad that Werner clarified it to say that the DA did speak to other CEDEC uh, uh, countries regarding their observe, uh, them observing the, these elections. So for me, right. I think we cannot say we are happy with what we have, but we don't want the extra layer. Why are we afraid of the extra layer? If we are happy with what we have, we will welcome the extra layer and move with it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Final thoughts. Verna to you first, and the 30 seconds as well as uh, Buti Manamela. Verna to you. Yeah, thank you. From our side, we, we w want to say that uh, we continue to trust the IEC, but what we is foreseeing is a, is a, a new type of election in, 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 on the 29th of May, where those who have historically held national power will fail to do so. And the best way to fortify our electoral democracy, and specifically the electoral process, is to ensure that there is uh, as many independent observers as possible right. to count any uh, accusations afterwards of the system's failing right. for former ruling parties. Thank you, sir. Uh, Buti? Uh, very quick point. I think our president has indicated some few uh, weeks ago that uh, you know we're quite worried of possible external interference and one can only marvel at the DA's invitation of external interference. We're not worried about an extra layer of, of uh, you know of observers but there has to be merit on why we need additional people to come in and, and, and uh, observe. Thirdly we've had We've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, mayors being changed, presidents mm. being changed in this country. There's never been blood that has been lost. There's never been elections that have been rigged. This is pure sensationalism. The DA will lose these mm. elections. The ANC will win. Thank you very much indeed, Buti Manamela Vernahorn, as well as all my digital audience uh, value added, no doubt. This conversation will continue. And as I said, it's topical, whether it's, it's topical or elections 360, elections 360 daily, we got you covered. All right. All right. Before we go, here's my take. Free, fair and credible elections. Let's throw in transparency, regular, periodic principles of this country's democracy. The aim is to make sure that the outcomes of an election is willingly accepted by you, the voter, as well as political parties, independents, etc. It, it then boils down to fair representation and accountability. Now, no doubt, if there are any holes which needs to be plugged, because it, this prevents us from, from reaching the goal of free and fair and credible, then let's talk about it and plug it if necessary. Election season, it, it's fast, it's, it's energetic, and it can also get heated, right? And sometimes we tend to get caught up in the hype, going for the win. But those after your vote must never forget what it means to be elected by the people. For at the very end, the people will hold you accountable. So are you looking at the situation, whatever it may be, right? Through the lens of what you want it to be, what benefits you and your party, or are you being objective? and putting the needs of the people first. Think about it. And that's my take. If you miss anything on this program, be sure to watch It's Topical on YouTube. Sports Live up next with Zai Khan. If you're watching a repeat of this program, then as always, the news continues. Until next week, my brothers and sisters, take care. Bye-bye.